Hi. Let's talk about the transition between level one to level two. We've created a system so that when our player has defeated two or more enemies, or whatever number you set here, they'll instantly go to the next layout. And it works, but it's very sudden and it's kind of confusing. Like for example, if I go in and I meet my objective, so I defeat two enemies, it's instantly in the second layout and it's too, it's too jarring. As a player, I don't really understand what happened. I need to have something that communicates to the player that, you know, congratulations, you've completed the level. So let's add a message that'll pop up before we get sent to level two that says something along the lines of level completed. Now to do that, we're gonna add a text object. We haven't really used text objects before. So let's take a look at how we can do that. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new layer down here in the layer window. I'm gonna go to add a layer at the top and I'm gonna call this layer text. I want to have its own layer for any kind of text messages that pop up and I'm going to put it right at the top so it's in front of everything else. And I'm going to right click anywhere in my game, insert a new object, and this time instead of inserting a sprite, we're going to insert a text. And I'm going to name it uh, level completed. You can call it whatever you want. Click insert. Now, once you click somewhere, it makes this tiny little text box. It's kind of hard to see because the text is small and it's black. But if you have it clicked on, you can adjust all the settings for the way the text looks over here on the bottom left. Now, the first thing we're gonna change is the size. So if I where it says size, by default it's 12, let's make it big. I'm gonna set mine to um, 115. Now, it looks like it disappeared out of my box, but the reason why is we just have to stretch out the box to make it big enough to fit our text. So you can just drag the corner of it and make it larger. Let's change what the text says. If you double click on it, it brings up this option where we can type in our message. I'm gonna make mine say level completed. You can make yours say whatever you want. What do you want your players to see when they beat the level? Stretch it out, make it fit. Good. We also wanna change the color. We want something that's gonna stand out against the background, right? So over here on the left, you'll see color, and then there's a, uh, a black box. We can change the color here to whatever we want. I'm gonna make mine kind of uh, like a golden yellow. Now let's change the font. The font is the style of letter, and by default it's Arial, which is fine, but if you click on the buttons next to it, it brings up a list of all these different font styles that we can have. You could look through the list and see if there's anything that looks good, choose one that you like the look of, I'm gonna go with Copper Plate Gothic. And then there's one last thing I have to change. The bottom option here says Origin. And by default, it's top left. We're gonna want this text to pop up right in the middle of the screen. So instead of top left, I'm gonna have the Origin Center. Good. Once you have your text set up, we don't want this to be visible in the beginning, right? So we're gonna just drag it out into the gray space outside of our layout. Now all we have to do is go over to our event sheet and we're gonna add some actions to this event in event sheet one. We're gonna add an action and we're gonna to go to system. Whenever you want something to just pop up on your screen, under system, you'll see the option for create object. If you go to create object, it asks you which object do you wanna create? And we're gonna create our level completed text. Now these next three settings are important. We wanna change the layer. We want this to pop up on the text layer, right? So we can do that by typing in the word text in quotation marks. If I start by typing in a quotation mark, a whole list of my layers pops up here. We're gonna to go to text. For X and Y, that's its location on the screen. And since we want this to be in the center of the screen, we're gonna type in for X, something called scroll X, all one word. What scroll X means is that wherever the screen has scrolled to, wherever the camera has moved the screen, the X value will be right in the center. And remember X is like it's left to right. Y is it's top to bottom. So we wanna do scroll Y here. Scroll X and scroll Y will center it on the screen. And then click done. Now, if we tried it out right now, it wouldn't work. And the reason why is because it goes to layout two first and then it makes the text. By the time the text has been made, we've already left the level. So we wanna drag this and drop it above. So it makes the object first, and then we move to layout two. 
But even now, it wouldn't really work because everything happened so fast, the text would pop up and then in a fraction of a second later, we'd already be in level two. So what we need to do is add an action, go to the system and we're gonna add a wait. Let's go down to wait and I'm gonna say, let's wait, I don't know, maybe four seconds. You can always adjust that if that feels too short or too long. And we're gonna drop that right in between. So the text pops up, we wait a couple seconds and then we go to layout two. And that should work, let's try it. Now notice it, I can move around and when I move, it smears the text around the screen. So it did work, but there's some things we have to fix. The reason why it's smearing the text is because we're actually making hundreds of these level completed texts over and over and over again, right in the center of the screen. And if we move the screen, it's, it's kind of changing where they're being created. We only need to make one level completed text pop up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another condition over here on the left. I'm gonna double click. I'm gonna to go to system and I wanna find trigger once while true. Because without this, we're making all this stuff happen over and over and over again for the entire time that we've defeated two or more enemies. This way it only happens once and then it'll stop spawning new objects. Great. The other thing that's kind of weird is we can still move around and actually we can still take damage, which is kind of a big problem because imagine you are playing this game and you've beaten the level, but then I still take damage and I lose before the level actually finishes. That's not very fair. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to disable the system that allows our character to take damage as soon as they've hit the level objective. To do that, we're going to add an action. We're going to go to system and we're going to use this set group active. What set group active does is it lets you take any of the groups that we've made in our event sheet, things like character movement, or maybe your player's life and deactivate it. So they'll temporarily not work. That's one of the reasons why we've been so organized with all of our groups. So if I go to the event sheet and I add an action under system for set group active, I can start by typing in a quotation mark and I can decide which group I want to deactivate. We're going to deactivate the player life group. And I'm going to set the state to deactivate it. Now I want the life system to deactivate as soon as you hit this condition. We don't want to wait the four seconds, right? We want to do it right away. So I'm going to drag it up to the top. And now while I'm waiting for the next level to start, I can't take damage. We want to make sure that we reactivate it before we go on to the next level. Because if we don't in level two, you still can't take damage. So we're going to add one more action here for set group active we're going to go player life again and we're going to activate it and we can just leave that right at the bottom so we go to layout two and it reactivates the player life we can do the same thing for all the different groups like it's still kind of weird that my player can move around after they've beaten the level right i feel like it'd probably be better if they just kind of freeze in place as soon as they win right it's weird that i can still run around so i'm going to go to the set group active I'm going to deactivate the character movement. And I'm going to drag that up to the top. I'm going to deactivate my character's shoot. Whatever kind of attack stuff they have, you can deactivate it. I can deactivate their dashing. Anything that you want to have kind of frozen right after they beat the level, deactivate it. Just remember that you have to reactivate it here at the end. So I'm going to go and reactivate all those same things. Character movement activated. You can actually even copy and paste stuff. Like I could just take the deactivated character shoot, copy it, paste it down here at the bottom, activate it, which saves you some time if you prefer to copy and paste. Now let's try that out. Great, stops there. We can even deactivate the enemy animations too. If you deactivate enemy one, then they would freeze as well. And then after a couple seconds, I moved on to level two. Excellent. We'll talk more about level two in the next video. Thanks for joining. Bye.